Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited to share with you some of the ways we have been spending our time uh, since we are, you know, safer at home during this coronavirus situation. So hopefully you get a lot of good ideas for your family. And at the end of this video, I just wanna wrap up with a couple of thoughts for parents as far as um, wisdom that we can impart to our children and encouragement we can give our children during this time that we are at home. I'm still working at home and I'm not as disrupted as Kofi is because I was working at home to begin with. The only thing that's different is obviously there are more people in the house and I don't have the two days that I would have during the week to work independently when Laya uh, would be in her hybrid program. Um, the other difference is just the way that I'm executing on things has changed and even my keynotes have gone virtual. Please join me in welcoming Marilyn Nardi. All right, hello. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I just wanna start by saying thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. It's outstanding that Unite for Sight and Yale University have shown tremendous adaptability in such a challenging time. And I commend the organizers of the conference for being able to reimagine this global conference to keep the lines of communication open for critical dialogue on health. And in this session in particular on human rights and health. Another bit of a challenge for me is just finding some time for peace and quiet since I am an introvert. So it's been a pretty good day at home, homeschooling with the kids and hanging out with family. But also, I realize that it's been over a week since I have been alone, physically alone. So I have come to take the dog out for a walk and get some time to myself. It's been a little bit more challenging for Kofi because he's not working at home. I'd say he's working from home. Hey. Making it work, getting it done, work from home every day right now. <laughs> taking taking calls in the garage and upstairs and, you know. But hey, listen, this is uh, the social cocooning that I mentioned in my last post, right? Who are going to be on the other side of this is going to be greater than who we are now. So this is all part of it. The best part about all of this is that we've had a lot more time to take advantage of the outdoors and to spend time together as a family. And I just wanted to show some of the great things that we've been able to do over the past few weeks that we've been home. We did visit Red Rock Canyon National Park a couple weeks ago. I'm not sure if all of the national parks are still open, but this was a lot of fun and you can check out my vlog on this trip. Even though we do live in a very urban area, we're fortunate because there's a lot of green space, a lot of parks, just a lot of places to visit and enjoy nature. So we have had a chance to do that. And the kids have been getting great pictures like this one Lincoln got and a couple of the others of the wildlife. It's been really fun. One of the hardest things about this for the kids is just that they don't get the opportunity to interact with their friends and classmates. So it's been awesome to be able to set them up for Zoom conferences. We also downloaded Messenger Kids for Laya so that she could stay in touch with a couple of friends and her soccer team. Good, looking good. Looking good, looking good. Learning curve is steep here, it's quick. Yeah, we're pros.
Lincoln and I have done a little bit of cooking and a little bit of baking and his future wife can thank me later. Perfect, perfect. Where is it? There it is. Japan. So where's the Pacific Ocean? The Pacific Ocean is... What color is the ocean on this globe? Red. Okay, so where do you see the word Pacific Ocean? Here. Yep, Pacific Ocean. There it is. So we actually have a small container garden on our downstairs patio and it's funny because my dad used to make fun of me but it's worked out great because we are doing botany with Laya and I have some fresh vegetables, a little bit of produce um, during this time when it's tight at the grocery store. Let me tell you what she told me. Let me tell you what she told me. She told me, she, S-H, her right here, she told me. Let me tell you what she, you're already, you're already even ready. You're not even ready. I can't even say it. Can't even say it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys appreciate this video and enjoy this video about how we've been spending our time since we've been under this self-imposed quarantine for coronavirus, trying to make sure we stay safe and our community stays safe. Um, something I didn't really add in was exercise. I was kind of dressed for exercise today and I'm still going to try to get it in because I see that um, COVID-19 is quickly turning into my own COVID-19. Um, so I need to get some exercise in there. And fortunately for me, my sister is a personal trainer, so she can send me some workouts virtually and we can actually even do some training sessions together. All right, so before I kind of move into the next little wrap up segment of this video, I just wanted to take a minute and um, drop in a little bit of advice with regard to how we're doing some of this COVID homeschooling with Lincoln. Uh, so Lincoln's teacher has been phenomenal and she has been quickly adapting and posting all of um, his work online and using so many of our different kinds of apps and different kinds of great educational websites to help us access really good content for uh, Lincoln and his classmates. Um, but I just wanted to explain what my method was now that we are, you know, kind of getting to the end of week two of this process and I'm starting to find my feet a little bit. So again, our teacher has given us kind of like a weekly schedule that's an overview of what um, he should be doing. And actually she went as far as to time block it for us. We aren't really adhering to the time blocking that she gave to us, but what I want to point out is I just have made these tabbed folders and it kind of has a tab for last week's work um, that was delivered to us uh, by our teacher, all of the logins for all of the different sites and then math, reading, writing, science, social studies, and art together. Um, and I have just created this table for Lincoln. He has a table every day, which just says, you know, happy, this was for Monday, happy Monday, Lincoln, reminding him to recite the pledge, telling him what time he has, uh, you know, different things. And then I've listed out every task. I've identified what subject it's under. 
I've described the assignment and then I've told him where he can find it, specifically referencing the tabs that are in his notebook um, or if it's online, explaining where that uh, information would be for him to log on so he can do it. Now, uh, you know, I made the page kind of fun. I had some graphics so that he can color it and I've done this uh, as a lesson plan for the week. So I did, you know, Monday through Friday. It was actually on Monday that I did Monday through Friday for him. I really just want to drop this in as a suggestion. Lincoln is seven years old. He's in second grade. And um, the time blocking is uh, tougher with him. So I think this just kind of creates a menu that will help him automate uh, because I think that's one of the keys to homeschooling that's a little bit missing or where there's a disconnect because homeschooling is not the same thing as doing traditional school at home. And I think we have some sort of hybrid going on right now. So when I do this, we have work time in the morning. He has online class time. He has a little bit of work time after that online class time. Then we break for lunch and then he has another work time. So within those times of work, he pretty much is working through these as best as he can independently. And I will take time with him. You know, I'll look over it in the morning and see where there are places where I'm supposed to do an activity with him. See if it's something that I can do or maybe even his sister can do with him or see if there's math because I do like to support him while he's doing math just to make sure that he's getting the concepts correct. Um, so I just wanted to put this in there because hopefully some other parents from our community will get a chance to see this video and this might be a helpful model for them too. Cause I know it's a little bit overwhelming to see everything for the whole week put in one place. But if you do this for your kids, it might help out. But I also wanted to just take a minute and share a couple of themes that hopefully came out in this video, but just things that I've been thinking about in general, about the opportunity that we have to really teach our children invaluable lessons during this downtime that we have um, as a family. So one of the first really important things that we can teach our children out of this experience is just kindness and civic responsibility. Here in Los Angeles, we were asked by our um, governor already to just kind of not really shelter in place, but um, stay at home because it's safer at home. And it's not just for our own health and benefit, but for the benefit of other people who are senior, who are immunocompromised, people who are at greater risk, because obviously we have, you know, limited capacity when it comes to the hospitals and public health systems. So I think as is developmentally appropriate, this is something we can talk about with our kids. We're staying home, not just to keep ourselves healthy and safe, but because we are kind of under a social contract and we have some sort of civic obligation to other members of our community and we can be good citizens and great community members by adhering to these rules. Another really important lesson that you can teach your children right now is about discipline. And when I say discipline, I really mean it with regards to scheduling and prioritizing. That's something, a process that we've already engaged in or started engaging in through homeschooling since the beginning of this academic year. And arguably it's something that we were doing even in traditional school, but now under this new circumstance, there's a whole new opportunity to really work out what is our entire day gonna look like from beginning to end really when it's under our own management. And ideally, this is the way that we're trying to get our children to be able to function as adults ultimately. So this is a great opportunity to really dig into this idea of scheduling and as much as possible, um, if it's developmentally appropriate, you can have your children participate in the scheduling and then also the prioritizing because everything doesn't get done every day. So it's just what are the most important things that do need to get done for the day and um, teaching them those lessons so that they can be really effective and productive. A third lesson that is related to discipline is just the idea of self-directed learning. So this is also really important because ideally you would like your children to be functional on their own independently when they go off to college or beyond. Um, even well into their adult lives, we hope that they would be self-directed learners and engaged in reading over their entire life course. So this is also a great opportunity to kind of plant and foster those seeds um, and develop that in them. And then also you get a chance to model it since they're home with you all day. They get to see about your process in doing research or the way that you work. So take advantage of that. Fourth, one of the most important things 
is just adaptability and flexibility. And this is something that we are teaching our children mostly through modeling. I had a great conversation with my dad not so long ago where he was explaining to me that a lot of times people misconstrue the real meaning of humility. And being humble doesn't mean that you, you know, um, deflect compliments. It doesn't mean that you abase your own accomplishments. But really, he told me, being humble means that you are flexible and you are malleable and you are able to persist, exist, and even thrive in different kinds of situations. So this is really, really fundamental and important. And we have the opportunity right now with our attitudes to really show our children how adaptable and how flexible we are and how adaptable and how flexible they can be. They may not even appreciate that uh, trait in themselves yet. But I think this is one of the most important lessons that we can impart as adults to our children is just this idea of being adaptable, being a survivor functionally. And, you know, I, I was hesitant to use the word survivor because I think that this is not a circumstance that requires language or diction that's that extreme. Um, but, you know, if you're an extrovert, it might feel this that extreme. <laughs> but uh, really, you know, this is something that we are getting through. It is a big disruption to our normal way of life, but it's certainly one that we can survive in, that we can persist in, that we can even thrive in and take advantage of the opportunities that are presented to us. And finally, the, the last theme that we can really draw out of this experience for our children is just faith and optimism. And, you know, we have an opportunity to teach our children and demonstrate to our children um, our moral convictions and our optimism and our belief in uh, the reality that things will always get better. So part of this experience right now is even though the situation can look bleak and it can look dire and we are hearing reports that are disheartening, we have to have faith and we have to maintain optimism to believe in a better tomorrow. Whether that means a tomorrow where coronavirus is something that's controlled, whether that means it's a tomorrow where we'll be able to get back up on our feet economically as a, you know, a nation, or whether it just means, you know, a better tomorrow in the sense of being able to address so many of the issues that are going on in our world, all around the world, you know, before coronavirus and those that will come after. So just faith and optimism is something that's really important right now. And I encourage you to talk to your children and also, like I said, model that for your children during this time. Mm -hmm.